evening with your CID TV News update. I'm Donna Bush. Legislative Assembly proceedings on Kim and Brack ended on Friday afternoon. This week, though, CID TV has been bringing you news on Kim and Brack. Today, we'll tell you all about the new playing field located on the bluff in the Brack. The field is covered with astroturf and will eventually have a track around it. New internationally standardized lighting has been installed and restrooms as well as changing rooms are now being constructed. When completed, the world-class facility on the BRAC will be able to facilitate all types of international games and begin a sports tourism industry for the island. Well, we're, we're looking at, again, from the tourism product, is twofold. How do we design uh, something on the island that helps with sports tourism? Uh, CONCACAF has been extremely helpful in helping us with the overall design of the new sports facility. And, and we're pressing ahead to be ready for August, for the tournament in August. Um, again, CONCACAF has been helpful in the design of it, so we're, we're quite pleased with the facility that will be available. But more importantly, um, it gives the youth of the island a place to play. It gives them the ability to interact with teams from all over the world, the region. They make lifelong friends through these tournaments. And, and we take a step into sports tourism because in August we should bring 100, uh, 120 people here for a week for that tournament. So you start seeing what the spin-off is from sports tourism. And we'll have more news to bring you from the BRAC in the coming days. Hear all about efforts to build tourism on a whole on the sister island. And we go to Lehman Scott Senior High School to learn more about their agricultural club. Well, members of the public have been able to share their opinion on a draft national disability policy to ensure that members of the public have an opportunity to provide face-to-face -face feedback and ask questions. A number of district meetings have been taking place. Now, the Cayman Islands Disability Policy Steering Committee, which is comprised of stakeholders from around the sector, launched public consultation meetings recently, as I just mentioned, and local businessman Keith Parker Tibbetts Jr., who's also the policy's patron, said with input from the wider Cayman Islands community we believe that we have an opportunity to make the draft document even stronger the committee is seeking feedback on the draft policies proposed overall goals and strategies now the policy aims to raise the standard of key services available to persons with disability with regards to health care education employment and social inclusion it also outlines a need to improve the data collection in many areas pertaining to persons with disability to better inform policy and service provision in both the public and private sectors now if you if you'd like to uh, see the draft national disability policy document, you can go online to gov.ky. An online survey posted on the same website will allow individuals to share their thoughts on the conditions that persons with disabilities face in the Cayman Islands today. In other news, the Needs Assessment Unit that provides financial assistance to the public will be relocating to the Aqua Mall. The NAU will be closed for relocation from the 14th of April and reopens its doors at the Aqua Mall next to Guy Harvey's restaurant on the 23rd of the month. Now, the telephone number for the NAU is 946-0024 and can be used for emergencies during this period. Staff apologizes for any inconvenience caused. Well, the Cayman Heart Fund recently made a generous donation to the physiotherapy department at the Cayman Islands Health Services Authority or the Cayman Islands Hospital, as it's better known. The donated items includes a blood pressure pulse oximeter machine, a laptop projector, stopwatch and radio CD player all items that are necessary to provide cardiac rehabilitation. The items donated will help the HSA provide those patients with the necessary aftercare and monitoring so crucially needed after suffering uh, from a heart attack or stroke. HSA Medical Director Dr. Delroy Jefferson stated, all of this equipment, no matter how large or small, will help improve our patient's experience at the hospital. A reminder about Radio Cayman's talk show, that's weekdays from 12.15 with host Sterling Duane Ebanks. And you can re-watch the CIG TV News up, uh, update throughout the night or go to our Facebook and YouTube pages. And that ends another news update here on CIG TV for this week. I'm Donna Bush as always, thanking you for watching. Have a great night, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you back here again next week.